He's a stand-up comic taking his show across the country. Ali Hassan, a familiar name, is in the middle of his Muslim interrupted tour. This is a one-man show offering up his own personal perspectives and is always using comedy to challenge preconceived ideas about what it actually means to be Muslim. Ali Hassan is joining us in studio this morning. Good morning to Good see you. Good morning, Nice Anne to Marie. see you once again. I know it's early. The, the stand-up comics have a hard time with the morning Well, I, get up, I got kids. I got four kids. Right. They're roosters. They wake up early. This is earlier than the kids. So, yeah, it's a little bit. I'm not going to complain about waking up early in front of you. This ah, is your life. This is nice. Hey, listen, before you came to Canada, you took the show to Edinburgh last yeah. summer. And since then, you've been taking it across the country. Uh, what parts of the act are getting the biggest reaction? Um, I think local references work well. They did not work well uh, in Edinburgh. They would not have. You know, my, uh, <laughs> my subtlety about buying booze at age 14 in Quebec did not really resonate with Ed Edinburgh crowds. No. I didn't really do, all, you know, that stuff. But I, I think stuff that just generalized Canadian experiences that show people that, hey, no matter where you're from and what your background is, we all have similar experiences. Mm -hmm. And, and there are people who love to, to, to highlight the differences, but it's just as easy to celebrate similarities. And I think that's what's really, people are taking that from the show. I want to ask you how this show plays regionally. I mean, Edinburgh aside, yeah. when you play this, this show, Muslim Interrupted, to different audiences across the country, yeah. I imagine, does your act change in St. John compared to how you pre present it in downtown Toronto? You know, it's a tricky thing. I don't want to make assumptions about the audiences. Right. When I'm in PEI, when I was in Charlottetown, you know, in Edinburgh, I'm probably the... 10,000th Pakistani that some of these people have seen in that month. Mm -hmm. In Charlottetown, I might be the first Pakistani that anybody's ever heard from. But when you get that stuff in your head, you're also making assumptions about the audience that you don't necessarily want to do. So I just, I do the show the best way I can. I don't make assumptions that they know stuff, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because I even, friends of mine were like, oh, I didn't realize that Muslims have to pray five, five times a day. I didn't realize that uh, there's an Islamic Sunday school that you could go to. So right. I was like, oh, I'm going to assume people know nothing. And I'm just going to, you know, paint the picture of my life. Now, some people might say, you know nothing. People who are actually practicing Islam. I do because... know nothing. They would be correct. And I say that only because yeah. you say you're not a practicing Muslim, but right. you're a cultural Muslim. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that I don't, I'm not at the mosque. I'm not practicing. I have a relationship with God. But I've always felt that that's my own personal relationship with God. It's not really anybody else's business. It's something that I have. Um, I don't follow the religion, you know, the theological parts of it. But my identity is Muslim. My name, my look, uh, my act, you know, characters that I play on television. And it, it, it is so integrally, integrally connected to who I am that I can't not be a Muslim. This is a really... Uh interesting time in history for this act to come out, for it you to is. bring this across the country. Uh, talk to me about the different reaction that you've had and, and what you're pulling from south of the border into this. Yeah, well, it's an interesting thing, too, because I may, I probably, odds are I wouldn't be able to go south of the border. So that seems like it's terrible. Like, you know, there was a girl who, Manpreet Kooner, I don't know if you remember her name, she was going with two white friends to a spa. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't allowed to cry. I mean, She's what chance do I have? Exactly. What chance do I have? to go do a show called Muslim Interrupted across the border. Can Could we bring be, a camera when you try to bring that there? You know like what? You guys are my first. Uh, <laughs> I, it'll be funny to wave to you as you guys all go through. Like, guys, take me with you. Sorry, we're going to the US. Um, so that seems like a bad thing. But on the other hand, those facts and what is contributed to that kind of thing is what's making the show even more popular. Are you making people uncomfortable a little bit with your comedy? I don't think I am. I, I definitely feel like I push boundaries a little bit, and I think comedy should do that at some level. Uh, but I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable where they're like, I don't want to be here. No, but make them think a little bit. Absolutely. I'm definitely challenging preconceived notions for many people. I have a lot of people who come to the show and go, you know what? I didn't know what to expect. Mm. Didn't know what you were going to do. Wasn't sure if I should come or not, and I really enjoyed it. I'm like, wow, that's great. I mean, I don't know if I'd go somewhere where I'm like, I'm not sure if I'll enjoy this or not. But obviously they are. You've had great success. You're right across the country. Yeah. And I'm glad we are still your stop here in Toronto. I'm so happy to be here. Best of luck with the rest of the show. All Thanks, right. Sally. Take care. All right, your morning. We'll be right back after this.